Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. So this week, DDO's executive producer, Severlin, did an Ask Me Anything where he took questions from the players, and we had a lot of information that was unveiled. So what I want to do is just go through that, go through the highlights of it, and discuss it and give my thoughts. Okay, so the video, the actual video, so you can get all the context, I will put below in the description. It's about an hour long. I'm just going to go through the highlights. I will point out timestamps of the specific things I'm talking about. So if you want to go back to that video and see the full context, you can. Okay, so uh, before we get started, the first thing there has to be a disclaimer. As several and said in his video, all the info he unveiled and talked about is needs to be taken with a grain of salt. None of it is official announcements. So everything I'm going to say and everything he said in his video is subject to change. So you can't take, don't take any of this stuff as for sure it's going to happen or anything like that. Okay, so the first first thing we have to talk about is at the five minute, around the five minute, five second mark, Severlin talked about the Isle of Dread. So it sounds like it will happen at some point. He said it would, would be the next big thing after 2020. So I, I wouldn't be surprised with Isle, I, with Isle of Dread. It's a, they first mentioned it back in 2018, actually in an interview with me at Gen Con. And it's something obviously they've wanted to do for a long time. I mean, Isle of Dread, they've, they've, definitely already worked on assets for it so if you, you as we saw in sharn they already have dino some dinosaurs were in sharn so it's definitely something they want to do and it sounds like they they definitely are going to do it i wouldn't be surprised if we see a quick a, a quick follow-up expansion to feywild so i wouldn't be surprised if we see aladred as the next expansion several didn't say that that's just me speculating but i wouldn't be surprised it sounds like it's going to be some kind of big project but in any case, Isle of Dread, they're going to work on. So we maybe we'll see that in 2021. Maybe not. Okay. At nine minute, 30 seconds uh, timestamp there. They, uh, several talked about Monk. So there's going to be a Monk pass and Monk, Monk change is coming. But it sounds like other stuff is on the horizon first. He specifically mentioned Epic Destinies. So they want to do an e upgrade and revamp to Epic Destinies. So that's going to happen before the Monk, monk pass and that's something we'll probably see next next year they also talked a bit when it came to the epic destinies about what they want to do so with the epic destinies they want to expand it a little bit in terms of uh, they well not expands not the right word but they want to make it so you're not as tied down to your primary tree so it sounds like there's going to be some more options to reach out into other trees to, for more flexibility so I don't know what form that's going to be in. Like he didn't discuss that, but that's something they said they want to do. I don't know if that means more t more twist slots, or if that means literally you can spend points in other trees while still being in some other, your a main tree. But we'll have to see. But it's something they said they want to do. Uh, the, the ten minute twenty five second mark. They talked about not more non horse mounts. So I don't think that's surprising at all. Uh, you know, obviously it makes sense for them to continue to do different kinds of mounts. We saw unicorn mounts with the uh, new Feywild expansion. I'm sure they'll reach out and do more other than just cosmetic variations of horses. Like uh, Severin mentioned specifically that he would like to do flying carpets, which sounds pretty cool, but uh, that's not a promise or anything. It's just something he said he'd like to do. But uh, I think we'll probably do st something along the lines of maybe a you know, maybe a uh, like an owlbear mount. Maybe we'll see with Isle of Dread them doing raptors. Like you can ride a raptor or a dinosaur of some kind. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. So, so in any case, it sounds like th there will be non more different kinds of mounts. Not really surprising there. Okay, uh, around the 11 minute 30 second mark, he talked about optimizing the effect systems to combat lag. So basically, there are many many different effects on any particular character at one time, and he specifically mentioned that. That system is really, it, it, there's more effects on characters than was ever really intended when that first system was first created. And saying stuff like that can basically cause lag. So that seems to be their, you know, their latest strategy in combating lag. And they've, they've made a lot of different changes to com combat lag. So we'll see if it works or if it helps. And we'll see what form that's in. I don't know if that means, that means they're going to actually consolidate effects or if it means they're going to take effects away and make them work in some other fashion so that it doesn't cause lag who knows but there'll probably be some changes there okay at the 16 minute mark he talked about a new feature called leadership so and this is it sounds like this is going to basically be be meant to combat the problem that we have of uh, basically uh, of new players coming to the game and there just being a huge disparity in terms of power so 
one of the problems with new players coming in is they see that all these veteran players have so so much uh, there's so much such a big distance between new players and veteran players because throughout the years veteran players have had past lives epic past lives heroic past lives iconic past lives racial past lives all this power reaper points all this power they've accumulated so with a leadership feature there might be a possibility of say when someone joins your group they might be able to benefit from your group's epic past lives uh, maybe reaper points as well he mentioned not heroic though so there might be some kind of sharing of past lives in a, on a group basis so we'll see how that works out but it sounds like it, it would be a temporary thing like you you would only benefit from that like while you while you you are in a group with with those people so we'll see we'll see how, um, you know how how that goes but that sounds like a, I, I think that's an okay it's not a bad idea uh, certainly they have to watch it because they don't want to overdo that in to make all this past life work that that veteran players have done over the years to make that less valuable so it's definitely a tough balance because they don't want to degrade all that time that the veteran players have put in but at the same time they want to make the game more accessible for new players so that new players feel like they can stay and invest in ddo and that it's just not a hopeless race to catch up that they're never gonna they're never gonna win you know what i'm saying so it's definitely a tough balance there uh let's move on the 18 minute 40 second mark they talk about a possible new bow focus tree called horizon walker and they said the name is subject to change but it sounds like it's going to be a universal enhancement tree focused on bows and they did mention that it may be coming with the next classic pack so they also there did kind of verify that we're probably going to see another classic pack so that refers to all another classic module so we've seen plenty of those slave lords keep on the borderlands temple of elemental evil all that you know we'll see another another classic module like that next year maybe coinciding with that so that sounds pretty cool i mean bows is something and we'll talk a little bit later about kind of a bow pass that they talked about okay at the 20 minute mark they talk about how they would like to revamp character storage and make it work more like account storage but they did say there's ui issues with that uh, the thing with storage is honestly it, it's it's always it's just ridiculous the state of storage in ddo it really is it's it's a really bad aspect of the game they really need to address i mean just most players seem to have multiple mules and it's just ridiculous that we have a system in ddo that that like mules is like a common thing that you have to create like five characters just to carry your inventory especially if you're someone who you, you may have to hold on to a lot of inventory specifically specifically if you're someone who likes to reincarnate a lot and do a lot of different builds you're gonna have say a like a you know like a like a crossbow that's only good for your artificer life or you might have a sword that's only going to be used for your fire life so that you might have to hold on to a lot of different equipment uh, for for different reasons so it's just really unfortunate the state of ddo so hopefully they can do something with storage i don't know how much they'll do the thing with storage is and they've talked about this in the past is that they obviously want to add storage but it causes lag problems and server load problems so it's not just a matter it's it's a matter of them figuring out how to do it so we'll see what happens there okay around the 23 minute 40 second mark they talked about guild revamps so they want to do guild revamps so that guilds have more things to work towards together plus more they want to do also do more stuff for guild shifts ships so that makes sense i mean with guilds you definitely when you get when you've kind of maxed out your guild in terms of having all the stuff you need in terms of buffs there's not really much use for renown so it'd be nice if renown always had a use going forward more than just boosting your guild level for for bonus you know just for cool reasons i guess you could say i hope they don't really add more to buffs though like i don't want to see more ship buffs added i think we have way too many as is plus when it comes to cosmetic work they do on the just various buff shrines i feel like that's a waste of developer time because no one ever goes below and looks at that stuff anyways and i felt like that when they initially did the buff pass on the ships just you you if you take the time and you all probably haven't done this in forever because most people never do it but if you actually go below your ship in the uh, and actually go through and look at all the various structures they put a lot of artwork into that and it's like it just seems like a waste because it just sits there in the lower levels of the ship without any use without anyone looking at it so i kind of hope they don't do more buffs if they do more cosmetic things your guild can go after i think that would be cool and that would be a, a good route to to kind of to go with that so maybe 
uh, after you reach a certain level, you can unlock you know, a cooler looking ship or maybe a different color for your ship, uh, something like that. So that would be neat. But uh, that's just me speculating. They didn't talk about that specifically. All right, at the 25 minute mark or so, they talked about mega servers a bit. So obviously the elephant, big elephant in the room that everyone always asks for and always talks about is server merges. And everyone wants that to happen. Uh, Severlin did say that, and he's talked about this before, the idea of a mega server. So instead of doing server merges, you would create a new mega server and then incorporate the, the current servers into that instead of actually merging. So that, you know, that sounds like a cool idea and it's something he wants to do. Although he mentioned all kinds of different issues related to that, such as uh, merging guilds or being name conflicts and just lacking resources to do it. So honestly, guys, like I said before in prior videos, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think we're ever going to see a server merge just because I don't think, I think for them, it's too expensive in terms of the amount of resources required to do it. I mean, I, it sounds like it's just a ma mammoth amount of work. And it's risky. You know, what if they screw up everyone's character? <laughs> so what if they break characters? Uh, it just se sounds like it's too risky and too expensive. So I don't think it's going to happen. But Severlin did kind of reach out some branches of hope here. So we'll see what happens. But I wouldn't get your hopes up, guys. Okay, next at the 26 minute, 10 second mark, Severlin talked about the EG7. So if you guys watched my last video, I went over in detail. And watch that video if you haven't. If you're interested, I went over the EG7 acquisition of Daybreak Games and the investors report they put out, which showed all kinds of financial data and player data for both DDO and Lotro and Daybreak's other games. And uh, Severlin didn't say too much in this regard. I mean, he just said they're basically excited to be working with EG7, that there's going to be new people to work with and good resources available. So we don't know what that means. Like I said in the prior video, guys, I think that best case scenario is EG7 you know, gives DDO more resources, maybe more financial support so they can hire more more personnel. Maybe we'll see something along that lines. Maybe we'll see some support from EG7 to expand DDO. Uh, DDO does sound like financially it has some merit to it. Of all of Daybreak's gains, DDO makes the most by, the most per player by quite a substantial margin, even though that's just per player. I mean, of course, DDO is not anywhere near the, the top in terms of like uh, gross revenues, but in terms of per player, DDO is really lucrative. So maybe we'll see some expansion by EG7 because of that, but we'll have to see. Someone didn't say too much else. Okay, at the 28 minute, 10 second mark or so, they talked about different racial revamps. So they mentioned Half Elf specific, specifically that they need to do a revamp for that. So it sounds like that might be coming in the near future. So Half Elf, they definitely need to go in and revamp the dilettante feats. I think. That's pretty apparent. I wonder if they'll do any kind of cosmetic effects because they went into race, uh, talking about cosmetics and um, with the races, the, the actual avatars and things and racial variants. So they said specifically that they would like to do uh, more racial variants. And some of the ideas that Severlin threw out there was Metallic Dragonborn, uh, an alternative drow uh, race, and also Durgar for dwarves. So we don't know what uh, form that's going to take. It could be a racial variant. It could be maybe an iconic. Uh, I don't know about uh, Dwargar specifically is one I think would be cool to see. Uh, dwarves, I think, are the only race not to have some other kind of variant or some kind of new race based off them. It's just the dwarf uh, body type seems to be specific to dwarves, and no one's ever really shared that. I mean, with halflings, we had gnomes, which kind of used that body type. Uh, when they're created we've seen things like purple dragonite which obviously uses the half orc uh, bodies but dwarf is kind of a unique body type that's never really been touched since we've never seen any variants based on it so i think uh, of all the characters uh, of all the races i'm sorry that that would like to, we that would uh, i would like to see a a new version of i think dwarf or, or dwarf or some kind of variant of dwarf would be cool i thought it, it, initially an iconic uh like iconic barbarian dwarf Zorgar would make sense, but they just had a iconic barbarian with shifters. So maybe we'll just get a very, I think if I had to bet, I think if Zorgar happens, it would be a racial variant instead of an iconic, but we'll see what happens. Um, again, that's just me speculating. Several didn't say anything to that effect. Um, as far as the avatars for the races, they talked about how they don't want to 
mess with those too much or they're, they're shy to do that just because like even though we look at the graphics and i think this this also ties into things like catacombs where people kind of complained about this but anytime they revamp graphics or do a rehaul on the graphics that's going to basically piss some players off because people even if if it's, a, if it's a graphical improvement in your eyes a lot of people are nostalgic or become tied to characters they played for years so people don't want to see that stuff um re revamped they, they don't want their characters look to change so that's why they've been doing and they talked about this a little bit how they want to do like racial variants in, in that strategy to kind of offer a, a variant instead of just replacing the cosmetic um, avatar for the current races um let's move on to so the 2950 mark they talked about how they don't they have they're not going to do evil characters so some people asked about if there's ever going to be an evil alignment in ddo and they said basically flat out no not not going to happen not going to ever happen they want to keep it as a heroic game and so i i mean unless they come with they, they've always said that i mean unless there's some kind of vast change in mindset i don't think we're i think it's safe to say we're never going to see evil characters in ddo a lot of the storylines not all of them but a lot of the storylines just really cater to playing a uh you know a heroic or non evil character so it wouldn't make sense kind of lore wise in a lot of ways if you introduced evil characters um 30 minute mark they talked about possibly doing more animal form cosmetics so possibly he said with isle of dread so that would mean so for like druid forms, for example, it could or could not happen. He did say possibly with Isle of Dread, but I think the problem with that is it's it's very niche. So if you're gonna put time into art like that, you'd want it to be widely available to the players. But if you make art just for animal forms, then only players that are playing races that use animal forms uh, can, can use those. So it really cuts down on the number of people that can buy it. So financially, it might not make sense. But we'll see what happens okay next around the 31 minute 30 second mark several talked about bows and them needing love so to follow up on what, what i said earlier uh, he said that's probably the next thing they're looking at right now so it's kind of a general statement by him but it sounds like bar, uh, bows are going to get a pass next year don't know when but uh they i've seen other developer posts on the forums i mean they're aware that bows are lagging behind right now uh, certainly bows you know took a had taken a back seat in range particularly yeah, ever since inquisitive was released with sharn and inquisitive was kind of the new big thing the dual uh, crossbows really was uh, until it got i mean it, it was an amazingly good build apparently i never played it but um i i saw it in game but anyways uh they've since nerfed inquisitive but uh, they definitely want to buff i mean i know inquisitive still good uh, but they want to buff bows to help them be more competitive so look out for that next year most likely um let's see the 32 minute mark they uh, several mentioned they're considering a micro hardcore season which would bring back a previous hardcore season for a short amount of time so presumably it would be uh it, that would be for several didn't say this specifically but i'm assuming that they would bring back a specific season for a limited amount of time so that if you didn't get say like the bloody bloody footprints or some other kind of cosmetic that you wanted to go after you would have an opportunity to go after it so for a lot of the cosmetics that really all, all the cosmetics for the hardcore seasons have been exclusive to those seasons so if you didn't play that season then you can't ever get it so it sounds like they might be changing that so we'll see what happens there uh, i'm speculating there a little bit with the cosmetics we don't know that for sure but um, we'll see what happens. Sounds like to me like that's what's going to happen. But uh, in any case, uh, they also mentioned um, with Hardcore how they want to space it out a little bit more uh, due to feedback from players. So it's going to be longer than it was before. That's a good thing. I mean, they were just pumping out Hardcore seasons very quickly after the previous one had ended. So it sounds like we're going to see quite a bit more time until the next one. I mean, it's been, it's been a little while uh, since... They definitely didn't want to release one during the expansion. So who knows? Well, I'm sure we'll see another one in 2021, but it may not be until later in the year. 32-minute, um, 50-second mark. They talked about a level cap increase, which is still coming. Although, for me to speculate, their language on that sounds like they're they're kind of less... Uh, this is just me speculating, but it sounds like from, from what I've heard from developers, they've been less, I guess, less excited to do that. 
Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if it continues to get pushed back. But it sounds like it, they still want to say it's definitely coming. But uh, it sounds like it might be pushed back more. And who knows if it'll ha when it'll happen? Maybe next year, probably next year. But we'll see if they change their attitudes on that more. But uh, I think with the level cap increase, I think it, it seems to not be very popular with players. I mean, I personally don't want to see the level cap increased, and I've talked about that in previous videos. Uh, but I, I, from the developer's point of view, I, I think they they look at it as kind of a something they have to do because with a level cap increase, that presents a lot more opportunities for them to add on to uh, like the. Uh, more reincarnation, the, the Adam adding on to the re reincarnation system because they've kind of hit a wall, and they I don't know what they can really do without raising the level cap increase. Sure, you, I'm sure you could think of some ideas, but it makes it much easier for them to expand the reincarnation system, and the that system is something that financially helps CDO a lot. I mean, they sell a lot of XP potions and hearts and autos boxes, so them. Uh, increasing the cap might just be something they feel like they have to do financially. I don't want to see it from a gameplay perspective, but uh, it sounds like it might be. It's going to happen anyways at some point. Um, but uh, let's continue. Uh, 37 minute, 30 second mark or so. They talked about how they want to continue to revamp packs, so I'm sure we'll see more of that in the future. They revamped this year uh, Deliras and Catacombs, so we'll uh, they didn't mention what packs they might be doing, but uh, personally, I think that the the pack I would like to see the most, if they if they do update the quest to a uh, I guess to epic levels, I think the Reavers Reach pack is a great pack to choose. I mean, those quests are awesome quests. It's a cool little area. Uh, I would like to see more uh, different uh, you know the the dragon touched armors revamped. So that, I think that would be really cool. But they didn't mention that specifically. That's just what I want. But uh, we'll, we'll probably continue to see some kind of pack revamped uh, probably next year. At the 40-minute mark, they talked about how they want to do more Ravenloft and Feywild content, such as they did in Sharn with the Soul Splitter pack. So we'll probably see more stuff added on to Ravenloft. I, I'm going to bet that Ravenloft is what happens should they pick between the two. I mean, Feywild's new, but Ravenloft's really popular. I, I think it's no secret that... I think the consensus among a lot of players is that Ravenloft is the best content DDO's ever done, ever had. So it makes a lot of sense. It's really popular. I think for them to add on to that pack would be a good choice. Um, although Feywild could happen too, or both. I think with uh, with doing that, they did mention one problem they have, which is do they require the expansion or not? So I think they got around that with the Soul Splitter pack. I don't think the Soul Splitter pack requires Sharn. They have a separate little area. So we'll see what they do. Like with Ravenloft, I don't think you can even get into the public areas, the three tavern areas, without owning the expansion. So maybe they'll do something like uh, make those public areas um, open to everybody and then put the new quests in the taverns. That's, again, that's just speculation by me. But uh, if they do something like that and have the quest spawn immediately in the taverns, that might be a way for them to get, get away uh, from the problem of, say, putting them in the adventure areas, which of course you couldn't access if you didn't uh, have Raven, the Ravenloft expansion, or maybe they'll just create a separate little area, a new public area. They could probably, they could do that too. Okay, at the 43 minute, 28 second mark or thereabouts, they talked about just generally things they want to do in 2021, some of which I've mentioned before already. So they talked about new adventure packs, which is a given, uh, new a new classic pack. So they didn't say which one it's gonna be, but we'll see. A new classic pack it sounds like in 2021 some other they'll pick one of the pen and paper modules and put it into ddo um let's see ed revamp so we've talked i've already talked about that they want to revamp epic destinies and then they talked about the new event so they briefly mentioned the new a new event in the uh, eg7 announcement that they put out a couple of weeks ago so with the new winter event they said they did say it was going to be a new winter event so I think what they'll probably do, even though they're calling it a new event, I think it's most m more li likely than not they'll just revise and upgrade and and re revise the uh, the current uh, winter games event. So they'll probably expand that. They did this with, uh, if I remember correctly, with the Maybar old Maybar event when they brought out Night Revels. They also called that a new event. It's not really a new event, like Night Revels. I didn't see it as a new event. It's just a 
revi revision of the old Maybar event. So I think we'll see something like that here with the, the winter event. They'll probably just add on to the current winter event and then say that's a new event. But is it really a new event or is it just a revised version of the old one? But whatever. Uh, they talked about the Feywild raid. So the Feywild raid, they said they're estimating beginning of February 2020. So that's honestly that's it's it's is pretty ridiculous. I mean, a lot of players have pointed this out with the the Feywild expansion. It's the expansion came out what a month over a month ago now, and the raids not gonna come out till February. It, it, it just that's kind of a that's a long gap. So you might want to hold off until buying it, uh, and buy the Feywild expansion when the raid comes out. If you're thinking about buying it and you haven't bought it yet, um, it's just kind of ridiculous that it's taking that long, but. It is what it is, and it could even be longer than that. I mean, Severin said, don't hold me. He said something along the lines of don't hold me to it. So we'll see it happens, but probably not till February 2021. Um, around the 45 minute, 55 second mark, they referenced the D&D &D movie and the potential of that to revamp, to ramp things up for DDO. So uh, pretty similarly to how the Lord of the Rings series on Amazon Prime that's coming is going to do the same thing for Lotro. So... If, for those of y'all who don't know, there is a D&D &D movie um, that the media actually just this week uh, gave more, some more details on. So it's going to apparently star Chris Pine. You know, he's the guy that plays it's like Captain Kirk in the new Star Trek, J.J. Uh, Abrams version of Star Trek. So the thing with a D&D &D movie, if a D&D &D movie comes out and it's successful, if it does well, it might get a lot more people invested in or interested in D, D as an ip and that could mean a lot more people playing ddo so hopefully that happens and hopefully that kind of gives eg7 some incentive to put more resources in the ddo or expand it similarly to what they're doing with lotro so for those of you all who don't know there's a lord of the rings series like t television style series coming out for amazon prime their subscription netflix style subscription service uh that is basically giving EG7, well, it presents an opportunity because the same thing that I just mentioned for DDO happens for Lotro. So there's a Lotro movie, a lot more people interested in Lotro as an IP, so that might mean more Lotro players. And EG7 is doing things like Lotro is getting a console port, for those of you who don't know, for the next generation consoles that was specifically mentioned in EG7's investor report. So that would be awesome. Like I would love to see something like that happen for DDO. If DDO got a, a console port, that would be amazing because as a gamer, I'm actually someone who much prefers to play on console instead of PC. Like D DDO is pretty much the only game I play on PC. Everything else I play on console because just because it's convenient and I like to sit in my big comfy, you know, my comfy recliner over here <laughs> when I game. So it's that would be cool if, if somehow a D and DDO port happened uh that would be amazing obviously this is speculation none of that's announced uh, the only the lotro console port has been mentioned but uh that would be kind of a, a dream for for me as a ddo player and uh the the consoles the next generation consoles also support mouse and keyboard so uh, if nothing else you could just play them the same way as so you play play them now uh play these games now but it would obviously introduce a huge new potential source of players so that would be amazing for both games but uh in whatever form it takes definitely the, the only thing several really mentioned here is that there's a potential for that to kind of ramp things up for ddo so uh let's move on so the 47 minute 30 second mark he talked about ui and ui scaling so a big problem that a lot of people mention and talk about is that the ui in ddo doesn't scale so it's fixed it doesn't you can't make it bigger or smaller so things like the hot bars for example you know icons they, they don't scale and that's something they want to address, but several mentioned that it just requires tons of work, and that's really the holdup there, because they have to basically, in order to make the UI scalable, they basically have to redo every icon in the game. So it's just a lot of time. So it sounds like it's something they want to do, but who knows when it's going to happen. Okay, next, at the 51 minute, uh, eight second mark, thereabouts, they talk about the season pass. So they said a season pass will not be offered this year. So that's not really a surprise, uh, if you all remember, it was about what about two years ago they offered a season pass that gave you, uh, if you bought the season pass, all the content that came out during the year. I think it was a year period or so, year and a half period. You would get, uh, to, you would get to own, and it also had other perks with it. Like I think it was daily gold rolls and things like that. So uh, that's something they did in the past. They're not. It sounds like they're not going to do it again. At least not next year. We could see it maybe in 2022 or something. But as of next year, it sounds like it's not going to happen. Um, let's see. 
about on the 53 minutes uh, mark or so, a little past there, Severlin mentioned DDO financially. So he said DDO is doing great, fi doing fi fantastic financially. So uh, obviously, you know, you kind of got to take that with a grain of salt because he's obviously the executive producer. He's not going to come out and say, if DDO is doing poorly, he's not going to come out and say, oh, DDO is doing terribly. <laughs> so uh, take it with a grain of salt. Although if you saw my last video, EG7 released in their investors report a lot of financial and player data for DDO and Lotro and Daybreak's other games. But it seemed to indicate that DDO is doing pretty well. I mean, DDO, one one notable stat that we saw is that DDO compared to, is doing much is doing better substantially better than any other Daybreak games in terms of revenue made per player, so bookings per player. I think it's the way they they described it. So DDO sounds like it's doing well in that regard. Obviously, DDO is not the biggest money maker for Daybreak in terms of gross revenues. Uh, because DDO is a smaller player base, but in terms of per player, it's doing well. It doesn't have all the kinds of information I would like to see, but there was enough there that showed that, you know, DDO seems to be doing pretty good. So uh, I'm definitely not worried about DDO. I mean, any of you all that are saying that it's going to end, or worried it's going to end soon, don't worry about it. It's not going to end anytime soon. Uh, I think that DDO is going to be around for many years to come. Okay. Uh, it, the last thing, so the 57 minute mark, he talked about monster manuals. So there's, they would like to do a new monster manual or maybe two next year. So there might be more stuff to go after in game for that. But uh, yeah, guys, that is going to be it for for like covering all that was discussed in that video. I didn't, like I said again, I, I didn't cover everything. Just I kind of picked things I thought were highlights. So if you want to watch the whole video in its context, again, I've linked that in the description. And uh, guys, let me know, uh, you know, your comments on this would be interested in reading this. Just it's so much information was given, but uh, so it's really cool that they actually do this, that they actually try to communicate and, and let us know what they're working on or thinking of. But uh, you also have to keep in mind, guys, that again, like several said, nothing that he discussed can be, none of it's an official announcement. So it all has to be taken with a grain of salt. They reserve the right to change their mind on any of it. So just keep that in mind. And don't uh, please don't be too hard on them if they if that happens because that's that just makes them not want to communicate with us if if players you know hold on to quotes and and say that oh you said this back in 2020 and it's 2021 and it didn't happen like I, I wouldn't jump down their throats too much that just makes them not want to communicate and it makes them also feel like in the future and as they're doing now they have to continue to to put disclaimers disclaimers on everything they're saying so. It's really just nice to see them actually talk to us, and I would like to see more of that. Hopefully, we get more of an insight to stuff um, earlier in the process, so we can give more, more thoughts and feedback on it. It seems like a lot of times, when stuff goes to like Lamania, it's kind of too late in the process for us to get major critiques in. But at least with this, we can, with how early they're they're getting us uh, information with this. Um, so it's, we're at least getting some ideas to at least provide feedback. So guys, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Let me know what you think about all this stuff. And uh, hope you all enjoyed. I will see you next time. Have a good one and take care.